it's an exciting time. We're, we're spending money, we're building a mine, and I can't help myself but be excited about the geology that I see in front of me. The real prize we see here is transformative, you know, explosive growth. Investors like me, investors like watching this, this show need to know, can you guys keep moving that share price? Are you capable of moving it? And what are you gonna do to move it? Because that's the way we make money. Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. First of all, thanks very much for watching this video. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up at the end. Uh, and do leave your comments below. Help us understand the sorts of questions you think we should be asking, how you think we've done, and of course, what you thought of the company. And you can also catch this as a podcast or read about it as a transcript or an article on cruxinvestor.com. Plus, if you're a Crux Club member, you get early access to this video. And if you haven't already done so, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more videos like this, click the notification bell. We spoke earlier today to Darren Labrens. He's the CEO of Pure Gold Mining. Now, this is a development story, soon to be a production story. They hope to be in first pour in the next five, six months. Um, it has been so a, a company which has been idling for the last two or three years, but has recently seen a uptick as the market has recognized that potential new uh, producer status and the fact of they've been able to better describe what it is that they think they've got under the ground. So um, fantastic uh, story here from Darren. We talk about how they've moved things through. They've got 100 million bucks in the bank. They've got Eric Sprott with 30 million uh, invested, got lots of new uh, funds involved with this um, story and they've got a lot more exploration uh, to do. So quite exciting topics to discuss. Take a look in the description at some of those. Anything interesting in particular, click on the number beside that and that's, uh, that's called a timestamp. I'll jump you to that part of the video. Otherwise, enjoy what Darren has to say. Darren, how are you doing, sir? Really well, how about yourself? Not bad, not bad. I'm, I'm surviving, we've got a heat wave here. 30 degrees, I, sh I should be by the pool, but instead I'm talking to you. That's how much I like your story. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, you can share some of your heat with us. We're, uh, we're quite rainy today. Ah, oh, right. Well, like, hey, for people new to this story, um, let's, let's give them that one minute overview um, of, of where you're at, and then we'll pick it up from there. Absolutely. Uh, so we are Pure Gold Mining. Uh, we're building our Pure Gold Mine in Red Lake, Ontario. Uh, it is a, uh, a mine that will be uh, in completed in December this time frame. So we're about five months away from first production. And, uh, and that mine is going to be the fifth highest grade mine in Canada when, when completed, the 17th highest grade mine in the, in the planet. And so we think we're really timed from a market delivery perspective. But importantly, we're, we're thinking about growth already and, and driving down that path. So it's, uh, and it's an exciting uh, time with uh, respect to Pure Gold. Yeah, no, I mean, well, it certainly is, and that's why I wanted to talk to you, because um, since we last spoke, which wasn't that long ago, only a few weeks ago, you've got a bit more money into the coffers, this, um, you know, you, you, I want to understand what you're going to be doing with it, but look, when we talked last, you talked about what you're doing during this phase one, you've just kind of gave us a clue there, you're five ways away from production and, and, and first pour, so um, can we just, again, remind people what you've done to within that phase one period? Um, and then we can sort of move and sort of look forward as to what you're trying to do. Absolutely. So we've got, uh, you know, on the ground over the last four years, we've uh, we drilled off a uh, 2.1 million ounce indicated resource at about nine grams per ton. I got another half million ounces of inferred material. And about two years ago, we, we very deliberately, and this is, you know, partially due to the market we were in at the time, we, we took the approach of um, moving a portion of that mineral resource quickly through to cash flow. And so what we did is we ring fenced a million ounce reserves at nine grams per ton. That's our phase mine, phase one mine, if you will. And, uh, and we decided to complete a feasibility study in that. At 1,275 US dollars an ounce, it uh, looked very robust. And so we announced a construction decision. Uh, we fully funded that. In fact, you know, arguably we overfinanced it. Um, and, and that gave us the, the financial flexibility to start construction. Uh, we're well well underway with respect to construction today. We started our pre-production underground development in December. Uh, we're working on, you know, effectively modernizing and building a brand new processing plant within the shell of the existing plant. And, and we are targeting first gold production in December of this year. And so, you know, very well timed from a market perspective, given the margin expansion we've seen over the last year. But, but all along the way, we, we have our eye on a bigger prize, if you will. You, know, you look at that broader mineral resource, we have discoveries that sit outside of the footprint of the phase one mine that already have resources. They're already known. Uh, we've done early stage engineering work on those to look at how they might be mined. 
And so we're really excited about continuing to advance that as, as a second phase, if you will, to, to layer on top of that phase one mine plan. And, uh, and certainly the recent financing gives us, uh, you know, additional flexibility in terms of um, executing on that plan. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I do want you to kind of finish off phase one properly because it, it is important to what I think you, I think you're going to be capable of doing in phase two. So some of the numbers mm -hmm. you're talking about, um, you know, 390 million NPV five on there. The ASIC is, you know, well below 800 uh, bucks an ounce. Um, you know, all in sustaining costs, you know, 17, number 17 in the world. You, you've got some really strong numbers there on, on this. And what I, I'm kind of, I'm always interested in the, the, the models that people employ to kind of, you know, get through, you know, get, get, get through to the, end, to, to the end point. So you had a few years of fairly static share price, right? It was a kind of uh, boring period in the, in, the, in the time frame of, uh, in the context of, of pure gold. But the model of getting the first poor is given. I think it's, a, it's attracted some big names. So you know, and, and that's what that's what I want to understand. You know, wh when you made that decision, what what were the options you were considering before you said, well, actually, I tell you what, let's just uh, peel off some of this thing, get it, get that going, and then we'll build out a phase two, a phase three, and you know, in this district scale project that we've got? I mean, what, what were the other considerations that you could have done? Well, I think, I mean, it's important to highlight, and, and you kind of referenced it here, you know, the, the static share price that we saw over, over time. And, and you look back at, you know, what we did over that period, we we grew a resource from effectively nothing to, to 2.1 million ounces indicated, uh, at another half million ounces inferred. Uh, we made several discoveries through that period. Uh, we drilled over, you know, three to 400,000 meters. Uh, we released some of the, you know, arguably the, you know, the drill results that would rival anything released on the planet over the last several years and and really weren't getting a lot of recognition for that so you know in a, in a, in a point market like today perhaps you'd step back and you'd continue to drill these surface discoveries you'd see how large they are you'd right size your plant and you'd come out of the gate and be a 200 to 250,000 ounce per year producer but in the market we were in uh, given the brownfields nature of our site uh, existing permits existing plant existing tailings management facility you know underground access we saw an opportunity to move very quickly from um, you know an exploration story effectively into into producer status and and we've definitely executed every step of the way. I think you know to highlight kind of the economics. You know we're perfectly timed here from a market perspective. You know a, a year a little bit over a year ago we released our feasibility study and and our base case economics were twelve seventy five U.S. dollars an ounce and exchange rate that meant we were you know sitting in around seventeen hundred Canadian dollars per ounce. Today we're twenty four hundred Canadian dollars per ounce. So that's seven hundred dollars of margin expansion has occurred year over year, and even on that phase one footprint, ignore all the resources. A million ounces of gold at nine grams per ton, we're looking at seven hundred million dollars of additional cash flow, on an all-in sustaining basis at seven eighty-seven dollars per, per ounce, and a price today is seventeen hundred and sixty. We're looking at you know nine hundred to fifty to thousand dollars U.S. of margin on a per ounce basis. So we've come through an incredible period of margin expansion. And I think, you know, you look at, uh, you know, our valuation. Uh, I think we're getting some recognition right now as we move towards, um, you know, production. We're getting that, you know, typical re-rate that you see as you, as you go into production. And and even if we're not successful on, on any of our, you know, our phase two or, or phase three aspirations in terms of growing the, the production profile and growing the company, what is, a, you know, 100,000 ounce per year producer worth today in Canada? And, and you look at examples, you look at, uh, you know, transaction precedents. We had Atlantic Gold bought for $800 million. Uh, we had, you know, Integra a year and a half ago in a, a very poor metal price uh, market, um, 100,000 ounces a year over seven years. They were bought for $650 million. Uh, Richemont Island Mind was 100,000 ounce per year producer and I almost paid a billion dollars for that. All of them showing potential um, for, for growth beyond that. And you look at, uh, you know, today. I mean, West Dome's a classic example. They're a hundred thousand ounce producer, and they're billion billion and a half in terms of their market capitalization. So we think the re-rate potentially are strong. You know, we're fully focused on executing, delivering our mine plan into you know this 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 exciting gold market that we have today. But that's not the real prize. The real prize we see here is is the opportunity for for uh, continued growth of those resources outside of the phase one footprint expansion of the mine plan, the production profile potentially, the economics of the project, and longer term, the opportunity for very, what I would call transformative, you know, explosive growth in high grade zones like our own eight zone. Um, these are the things that, you know, really get us revved up in terms of driving this project forward. And it's certainly what uh, brought in 
you know, Eric's brought to, to, to finance an aggressive growth. Yeah, and, and I do want to get onto it, but I, again, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to understand the moment. And the reason, the reason it's important, because there are going to be future decisions you're going to have to make. And I want to understand mm-hmm. the big moment where you change. You said, "Well, look, hey, let's let's go." Because if you look at someone like Great Bear, okay, they're they're kind of you know a good comp in the sense that, that in terms of size and scale, they've got a different model. They're kind of drilling out. They're probably not going to do a resource for another you know year or year year and a half. And and you know, great. And they've got they've been recognised for what it is that they do. You're saying, well, actually. We've got a pretty good project. The grades are great. You know, fifth, fifth house in Canada. Um, it's, a high, it's a high grade project. Um, but we're going to get a, a re-rate from being seen as a producer. We're going to show that route to market. Show we're capable of being you know, mine builders. Uh, we've got a you know big enough, high grade enough resource. I think the markets come with you. Well, you timed it right, as you say. I think that that's true. You've really timed it beautifully. Um, in the sense that you know, the goals come back just at the time that you're going to. You know, be be be, be pour, you know be pouring, and that's going to give you the sorts of cash flows to develop what is quite a you know you're sitting on a big land package here, and it has mm-hmm. got people like Eric Sprott excited. He's he's come on and backstopped the last fifteen million bucks raise you did. You know, he's he's got a big position in this thing. So um, maybe start, now's the time to talk about phase two. So we're going to assume that you know one point nine billion. Um, Revenue on phase one is, is, is quite exciting in its own right, and it is. What does phase two look like? And what are the big decisions you're going to have to make to get that thing going? Because you've got cash. You've got 100 million of cash now. That's quite nice. You've got lots of options. So what are the big decisions for you this year or the next 18 months? Yeah, so let's step back for a moment and look at the, you know, the mineral system that we have in place. Uh, you know, this is a, a Brownfields um, site. As you say, it's a large land package, 47 square kilometers. Uh, we've outlined a, a mineral corridor or structural corridor, if you will, that runs uh, kind of bisects the property and runs for for seven kilometers. I mean, this is a big mineral system, and, and I think they're, you know, that's one of the the key components of you know our what underpins our value. You know, location obviously, Red Lake Ontario is a fantastic place to be building a mine, uh, but size of the system and growth potential, you know, on top of greater are, are incredibly important. So, a seven kilometer mineralized system. Um, you know, our phase one footprint forms part of that. But as you step to the south, we have new discoveries, you know, things we call fork zone, the wedge zone, which are at surface. They're defined down to three to 500 meters. We have mineral resources on those. Uh, we did a, you know, an economic, or not an economic, but an engineering kind of scoping level study to look at, you know, what would the capital be to mine them? You know, what kind of productivity could we get out of those zones? And, and so we already have a good sense of what impact they could have on the phase one mine plan. So the uh, you know the exploration program that we've just initiated, uh, it's going to be you know thirty thousand meters to start. It'll likely go to fifty thousand meters over the next eighteen months, and it's really got three goals uh, of that program. One is to convert resources to reserves in the footprint of the phase one mine. So we're underground there. We're, we're drilling you know in and amongst the the first three years of the mine plan, really to look at growing resources and ultimately reserves in in that footprint. Two, we want to look at these surface discoveries the extension of the broader mineralized system and and grow those resources because they are open uh convert and for an indicated to, to give us uh, you know a better confidence of incorporating them into a future mine plan and then ultimately look at you know what is the productivity of those mining centers you know what could fork wedge zone rust the south zone deliver to a centralized milling facility and you know we we, we feel it's you know we're looking at easily 400 tons per day 800 tons per day is, is is something that we we looked at in our scoping study, and so you know you put those two together. We've got an 800 ton per day plant today. You add 800 tons of production from those mining centers, and suddenly you're looking at doubling your production profile. And you know to step back to valuation, it is not a linear change from 100,000 ounces per year producer to a 200,000 ounces per year producer. So we think there's a you know a huge value uh, opportunity here in 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 following this this phased approach. No, no, I'd, I'd agree with that. But here's here's your big challenge, your next big challenge. Your MPV five, you're above half a billion. I'm not sorry, MPV five. Your market cap, you're above, you're above um, half a billion now. And you, so you, yep. like I say, your share price got over the kind of moving average for the last, I guess, two or three years. Only some two, three months ago, right? So you, you, you moved to the next phase, the next level. You've got a bunch of cash, hundred million bucks of cash in, in, in the bank here. You've got the support of 
people like Eric Sprott, who I imagine is comparing this to Kirkland Lake, you know, and you know, I, I, I don't understand the the value to Kirkland Lake and Fosterville um, and, and entirely, but I imagine he's he's got a pretty big number he's viewing on you. And, and when we look at, you know, people mention Eric Sprott's name, it's usually in the context of placing a $2 million, $3 million, $5 million bet. Right. You're more than that to him in, in dollar terms. Um, and what, what's he saying to you? What's his expectation? Um, what's, what's he seeing here? Because investors like me, investors like watching this, this show need to know, can you guys keep moving that share price? Are you capable of moving it? And what are you going to do to move it? Because that's the way we make money. Yeah. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. I mean, Eric's put $30 million into Pure Gold. Uh, it's a, you know, he's a 12% shareholder and, uh, and the comparisons to, to Kirkland Lake are, are, are his comparisons. And, and so let's, let's kind of unpeel that a bit. Um, Cause I don't think it's pie in the, pie in the sky kind of, kind of stuff. Uh, our mineral resources, you know, I talked about the surface discoveries we made a long strike uh, within the heart of the phase one mine plan. We have resources and reserves down to about a kilometer depth. Uh, we have an intercept, a drill intercept uh, at 2.1 kilometers. And so there's, you know, you think about these deposits around the world and, and certainly Macassa, Fosterville, the Red Lake Mine Complex now owned by Evolution just up the road from us are great examples of, of this style of deposit. They're, they're deep rooted. And so we have every reason geologically to believe and it's supported by a deep pierce point that our deposit will continue to depth. So what differentiates, you know, Kirkland Lake? Um, Macassa, you know, was a brownfield site that made a deep discovery called the SMC and took it from, you know, 50,000 ounces of production to 260, 270,000 ounces last year. Fosterville Mine, you know, multiple companies you know, broke their pick, as they say, on, on Fosterville. Uh, they discovered the Swan Zone, suddenly it's producing 650,000 ounces. And that explosive transformative growth is, is, is it's a company builder. It's really exciting. So just down the road from us, I worked at the Red Lake Mine, you know, chief geologist at the Camel Mine in the mid-1990s, and the first drill holes were going into the high-grade zone at that time. And the high-grade zone was really what, what Gold Corp was born of. Um, at the end of the day, it's produced 6 million ounces at 70 grams. It took that production profile from 500 and 552,000 ounces, and it turned Gold Corp into a $20 billion company. So you step back and look at our mineral system, you know, two and a half million ounces of historical production. We've got 2.1 in indicated, half million in inferred. You're pushing 5 million ounces in the top kilometer. At 800 meter depth, we have our high grade zone, the eight zone. And uh, it's got fantastic uh, drill intercepts that have gone into it, you know, 4.3 meters at 460 grams per ton, five meters at 342 grams per ton. It runs three times higher grade than our overall reserve and, uh, and it's open. And so, you know, we think it's the tip of the iceberg, you know, the expression as we have is to we're just scratching the surface. And, and when you look at the discoveries made on long strike, you look at the, the tip of the eight zone or high grade zone and that broader potential down dip, I think that uh, our growth plan from here is tremendous. Okay. So I think, like I say, I keep coming back to the difficulties of growth, the, gro the growing pains as it were, right? You know, see, it's kind of, it's kind of easy to get to hundred million and hundred to 250 million, then the upper end half a billion, you suddenly become, you know, noticed by the, the, the funds, the, the, the big boys. You've hopefully got liquidity, you've got the share price, you're over, you know, 140. So it's all kind of heading the right way, but it kind of sustain that. How do you play the game between doing this right geologically, drilling geological holes versus drilling marketing holes? Because you got yeah. to feed the market going forward, but you've also got to do things the right way. So how do you, how do you strike that balance? You do, you do. And, and I think, um, you know, strong funding is a, is, a, is a key component to that. When you look at our, our, our drill program that we're laying out today, you know, this isn't 5,000 meters and we're going to go drill a couple of holes next to some high grade holes and, and get a little bit of market excitement. I mean, this is a prolonged, sustained effort that has multiple objectives. You know, one, we're looking to grow reserves in the footprint of the, of the mine plan. Um, that's a real tangible objective that will drive value in that phase one mine. Two, we're not we're not making up um, targets outside of the uh, the phase one mine. We've got resources in in wedge zone, in fork zone, in rusted sub zone. They are open. Uh, we have a strong geological model in place, and we're going to be looking to grow those resources to really determine how big those mining centers are. And uh, and so that's going to be. Uh, a key component of the of the program, and then of course the you know with the luxury of, of being well funded, we can target some of this explosive transformative growth, and 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 that'll occur as well. So when you look at you know 
the next 18 months, uh, you know, we've got three drill rigs active. We're drilling 30,000 meters in the first phase of the program, growing to 50,000 meters. So we'll have results out here in the near term, and you'll see a steady stream of results, you know, every two to three weeks out for the, the balance in the next 18 months. And so key priority number one is executing on our mine plan, delivering on cash flow early next year. Uh, to, to start, uh, you know, continue that re-rate into producer status and step back to talk about what 100,000 ounces a year is worth in Canada today. And then beyond that, this, this tremendous growth platform that we see and the ability to, to deliver on our objectives is, is I think, going to continue to drive the value to, to where we all think it should be. So do you, you're the guy running the company. You're the CEO, right? These, these, are, your, these, are, these are your decisions. You're not under any pressure yeah. from Eric Spott because he's turned up and done it before. You're not under any pressure from these large institutions are sniffing around to behave or do things differently? No, I mean, we share the vision. And so we, we all see far beyond the phase one mine plan. And Eric's broad, you know, 12% shareholder. Angla Gold Ashanti, you know, world number three gold producer is a 15% shareholder. They're really excited about the uh, the, the, the path that we've come along and, and the growth that we've in front of us. Uh, and you've got Newmont, Rob McEwen is shareholder. So you have a marquee list of shareholders here that really share that vision of, of what this asset could become. Okay, you're not going to get distracted with any any other shiny objects elsewhere. No M and A, you've got enough. We're not looking at that right now. Obviously, we've got um, you know we got to execute. That's that's job number one, and two. You know we see the strong gro organic growth platform that we can drive real value from. You know down the road. Um, obviously, we're a, we're a group uh, that uh, that uh, you know has strong aspirations for growth, but uh, we got to get those things right first. Okay, and what do you, so with this hundred million bucks, is that going to see you through the next eighteen months or, or, or beyond? Yeah, so we're financed through through first gold bore in Q four, commercial production in Q one next year, um, the aggressive uh, exploration program that we have over the next eighteen months, and uh, you know, given the, the 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 market dynamic we see right now and the margin expansion, uh, cash flow will be really strong uh, right out of the gate. Okay, okay, and the so the on the exploration side, I mean. I mean, obviously, you're going to be pouring gold, right? So that, that's really exciting. Fantastic. Where's the excitement for you, though? What, what, what do you get most excited by? I'm, I'm really excited about the, the, the high-grade potential. I mean, obviously, we, we have a clear path here to grow our resources well beyond, which what is already a, a, a very significant deposit in Canada. But uh, you look at the eight zone, you look at the grade of that zone, and, and the, the fact it shares the same geological environment as the Red Lake Mine high-grade zone, uh, the fact that it's open, um, that kind of discovery and growth of that zone and other zones like that is what really gets me super excited about this company. And do you, I mean, you're the CEO. Do you still like, get, you know, get your boots on and get in the field? Are you still excited by doing that or are you too busy running a company? Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm a geologist by background. And I don't claim to be a geologist anymore. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on running the company, but I, I, I need to be out to out site. You know, um, there's a lot going on and uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time. We're, we're spending money, we're building a mine, and I can't help myself but be excited about the geology that I see in front of me. So are we. I mean, like I said, we, we, we've, we've been speaking for some time now and you're following the story and mm -hmm. it's, I think, finally kind of picking up, you're getting that recognition for what you've got under the ground. I mean, you knew a lot of this for a long time, but the market didn't care. But I think in this environment, you, you possibly have timed it right. So um, like, th th thanks for the update, uh, what's going on. It sounds like you're going to have a lot of news flow. I'd like to think that we could talk more regularly and sort of see you keep delivering. I hope you do get Absolutely. those grades. Um, yeah, so pick up the phone. Will do. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it.